सर प्लीज स्टार्ट सर ओके ओके वन मिनट okay good evening once again uh, today i have picked up a, uh, i i have divided the ortho topics into multiple uh, fragments so that even though if you get few questions on these topics you don't have to read and reread again and again right manjunath will be knowing very well so today i have uh, i will focus last uh, uh, class basically was more or was focused only on osteomyelitis before that it was only tuberculosis of spine so similarly today i will concentrate only on septic arthritis okay right septic arthritis you should know what is septic arthritis arthritis is inflammation of the joint septic is pyogenic infection by a pyogenic organism so if there is a pus in the joint following the infection of the uh, inflammation of the synovium by a bacteria non tubercular so then it is called as septic arthritis okay so certain things you should know what is septic arthritis when it it generally starts with uh hematogenous spread most commonly otherwise if there can be external injury in fact like penetration injury right but most common cause for septic arthritis is hematogenous spread there are some slides here i will skip that for time being uh then we will slow straight away go to certain mcqs then you will have an idea in case of suspected septic arthritis best way to confirm the diagnosis right can anybody take a chance want to attempt answer As aspiration of question? joint Yes. yes one in case of suspected septic arthritis best way to confirm the diagnosis is by aspiration of the joint very correct first ct mri can show only if there is a synovial thickening or fluid in the joint but you will not know whether it is a even inflammatory effusion non inflammatory effusion or a infective effusion blood inf investigations is certainly non specific there can be markers raised mar inflammatory markers in the form of esr and crp right but the best way or the gold standard is not necessarily aspiration of the joint aspiration of the joint the synovial fluid has to be sent for analysis i will come to the appearance chemical structure and the uh microbiology little later right so the most common organism most common organism for septic arthritis is please remember it is staphylococcus aureus most common organism even in uh, acute osteomyelitis is again staph aureus only except for iv drug abusers wherein it is pseudomonas and salmonella in case of uh sickle cell anemia otherwise na most common organism is staph aureus you should remember staph aureus is a most common organism and most common root of spread of infection is hematogenous okay so here i will come to the previous slide right so there is one more entity called as transient synovitis and most common joint involved is knee joint please remember that so whenever there is a in inflammation of the joint there is always pain and limited movement of the joint so there is one condition called as toxic synovitis right transient synovitis 
also called as observation hip all these are similarly what i am talking these are same name for transient synovitis transient synovitis is also known as observation hip transient synovitis is most common in hip joint we have to differentiate between transient synovitis and septic hip because transient synovitis as the name itself suggests it is subsides with rest and anti inflammatory drugs right okay which of the following is an orthopedic emergency which of the following is an orthopedic emergency hmm fracture neck of femurs no manjunath okay the wild guess going on the context of the subject being discussed today would be answer would be septic arthritis but you should know the rationale look at the other choices right the intraarticular fracture is a fracture of necessity any uh, fracture for that matter is not an emergency unless it is a open fracture fracture neck of femur any fractures we can wait for fixation except compound fracture and fracture neck of femur right because fracture neck of femur any delay in fixation the chance of going for avascular necrosis is very high that's why it is also called as fra fracture of emergency right here i am talking of orthopedic emergency with respect to other fractures so the entity here is septic arthritis any delay any delay in terms of hours there is erosion of the articular cartilage irreversible the erosion of the articular cartilage is irreversible hence the septic arthritis is an orthopedic emergency of course this lateral condyle uh, humerus fracture fracture neck femur intraarticular fractures these are fractures of necessity understand the answer is septic arthritis most common joint involved in septic arthritis as i already mentioned you should be able to answer this question most common joint involved in septic arthritis is knee of course there is nothing much to explain so So aspirated synovial fluid in septic arthritis will have this is very very important see as i told a child generally a child is brought with a pseudo paralysis the child is unable to move unable to stand unable to walk and not even limp and high degree of fever you have a very high degree of suspicion of a septic arthritis so what you do you do synovial aspiration because other investigations are not clinching the diagnosis or rather not conclusive of the diagnosis so you do synovial fluid aspiration it is also called as arthrocentesis right so once you do synovial fluid aspiration you have to do synovial fluid analysis in terms of physical appearance and chemical constituents in the form of protein and sugar then comes your cytology what kind of cells you see and what is the cell count then comes your microbiology either by staining and of course by culture so aspirated synovial fluid in septic arthritis will have what so going on what i have told option 2 and 3 option 2 and 3 we have only one choice here only one is the correct answer manjunath see clear fluid option is an option 3 option 3 is increased polymorpho nuclear leukocytes very very high cell count first of all and second among the very high cell count 
neutrophils ratio is very high right clear color you see a patient a old age patient you aspirate the fluid because of the knee pain you see it is clear normal synovial fluid non inflammatory synovial fluid is clear in color inflammatory is straw or yellow color yellow color comes more thick yellow color comes in septic arthritis high viscosity you should remember manjunath normal synovial fluid is highly viscous because of presence of mucin because of infection the protein is lysed the fluid synovial fluid loses its viscosity what you are what you confused yourself for the high viscosity in septic arthritis is it is thick the fluid is thick that doesn't mean it is highly viscous i will explain you in, uh, in subsequent slides but here the answer is marked increase of polymorphonuclear leukocytes am i clear yes sir good see look at this uh, is the slide uh, clear wait a minute is it better anybody any one of you can answer me no sir you are yes, clear the slide is not clear but screen is visible isn't it screen my screen is visible yes sir screen is visible your internet is poor please focus on these test tubes if there is something called as transparency tests once you aspirate the fluid and put it on the test tube you have to read a print if you are look at this in first and second slide you can read the print in third fourth and fifth slide you are unable to read a news print kept behind the test tube that means it is turbid not highly viscous or anything it means it is turbid so you can read the print behind the test tube containing the synovial fluid in normal and synovial fluid of osteoarthritis but if it is inflammatory inflammatory i am talking in respect to rheumatoid arthritis sle gouty arthritis septic of course you know septic arthritis even it could be a tubercular arthritis fourth one is hematogenous because in traumatic so all these three this is called as transparency test wherein you see you cannot read the print kept behind okay i muted my uh, uh, muted myself i had an emergency call anyway okay look at this figure i have one more figure here yeah look at this this is how you test the viscosity and this is also called as string test please remember it is also called as string test wherein you take a drop of synovial fluid in the gloved finger of course you have to wear the gloves and try to touch and expand generally the it forms a string up to 5 cm you don't try to remember the exact number what i am saying is telling but it can form up to 5 cm long string without break or the best other way would be take a syringe and try to drop the fluid slowly so it forms a string like this 
at least this picture is clear students yes sir okay see it forms a string like this if it breaks in between it means it is less viscous you know highly viscous means it is very adhesive kind of thing imagine it is a kind of a glue it is a glue wherein it doesn't break it forms a string it doesn't break glue is possible only if there is a high content of mucin in normal non inflammatory that is in normal synovial fluid or in osteoarthritis but in inflammatory or septic arthritis that protein is degraded by the protein enzymes of the bacteria hence it is less viscous am i clear normal viscosity is very high in infection in inflammation the viscosity is less no confusion here okay this is this picture at least is better look at this 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 is a normal synovial fluid this is osteoarthritis wherein you can read a fine print behind the test tube all these three you cannot see this is traumatic hemorrhagic uh, synovial fluid in case of trauma trauma or in case of hemophilia the third and fourth could be inflammatory kind of rheumatoid arthritis or other connective tissue disorders and this is septic arthritis synovial fluid analysis of course there are too many parameters to understand but certain basic parameters you should know right with respect to viscosity color and wbc count white cell count so don't try to remember the range of uh, the cell count in the synovial fluid one thing you remember in septic arthritis the counts are to the more than 15000 more than 15000 please remember of course here it is mentioned as 50000 more than 15000 and more than 75% of these cells are neutrophils or polymorphonuclear cells right rest of this you don't remember high cellular count and high neutrophil count of course color as i told you normal to straw color pus is yellow in color hemorrhagic is either in trauma or when the patient comes with a hemophilia viscosity please remember manjunath i will tell you once again viscosity is very high in normal it is reduced because of the infection because of the mucin is completely degraded in the uh, septic arthritis hence the mucin which is responsible and also you can remember this way the lubricant the oil which is very very highly viscous the oil what you put in your uh, vehicle in the two wheeler four wheeler whatever so that is highly viscous that is normal but if it is less viscous means the lubrication is not good that means the joint has there is a infection in the joint so highly viscous in normal joints less viscous in infected or inflammatory joint yeah this one more slide don't focus this is a too busy a slide to go through each and everything but please remember synovial fluid analysis is done in the form of appearance clarity as i told you clarity or a transparent test w uh, white cell count polymorphonuclear cells crystals are important when it comes to treating patients suspected patient of gout or pseudo gout gout you get to see uh, uric acid crystals in uh, pseudo gout it will be calcium pyrophosphate crystals cppd crystals bacteria you have to see these synovial fluid once you aspirate you have to study in these parameters okay don't go into all these details but i told you polymorphonuclear cells are very high in tb and septic arthritis and even in inflammatory arthritis but what is more important is the count the cell count the cell count is very very high right of course you have to grow bacteria either you see in the stains 
or you have to culture the bacteria to confirm septic arthritis. Yeah, this is one more thing uh, I just to reinforce uh, repeated in importance of viscosity. As I told you, good viscosity means you just try to drop from a syringe or uh, with a hand, gloved finger, you can see the difference in good and poor viscosity. So arthrosynthesis, as I told you, it is aspiration of the synovial fluid. Is The procedure is called a synovial fluid aspiration arthrosynthesis. Please remember joints like knee and elbow, which are subcutaneous. Knee, elbow, ankle, wrist, you can aspirate directly. Most importantly, the site of aspiration of synovial fluid in the knee is superolateral aspect from here. You please remember the needle is shown here. You have to aspirate here. Okay. All the joints can be aspirated uh, without any assistance, but hip joint being very, very deep, you have to use a ultrasound where we do ultrasound guided fluid, uh, synovial fluid aspiration or ultrasound guided arthrosynthesis for hip joint. Rest of the joints, you can generally aspirate uh, clinically without any assistance of any investigative modalities. Yeah, this is one I wanted to show you. Generally, it is superolateral aspect where you aspirate with a wide bore needle. And that is very, very important because the fluid is thick, turbid. Your 20 gauge needle, 22 will not help. You have to use at least 18 gauge needle where you can aspirate a very thick fluid depending upon how the or when the patient presents. Seven-year-old boy with an abrupt onset of pain in the hip, with hip held in abduction, hemogram normal, ESR is raised. What is the next line of management? Read the question carefully. Hmm. Though the question is long, it carries enough information. Quickly, you can take the answer. Abrupt onset of pain held in abduction. I told you, Faber is the position of the hip. Faber means flexion, abduction, external rotation. Hemogram is normal, means the cell count is normal. ESR is definitely raised. What is the next line of management? Option four. Yes, you ultrasound guided aspiration of the hip. Okay, right. Four year old male is brought with a high degree fever. Mark the uh, phrase high degree fever, decreased appetite, hip pain. On examination, he is dehydrated because of high degree of fever and tenderness in the scarpa triangle. Okay, absent movements. Movements are absent totally. It is also called as pseudo paralysis. Of course, you have read pseudo, pseudo paralysis in scurvy. Any painful entity where the child doesn't move the limb, it paralysis is absence of movement, isn't it? So neurologically intact, unable to move the limb means pseudo paralysis. Here again, the patient doesn't move or unable to move the hip. Hip in Faber. Faber is flexion, abduction, external rotation. This is a position of the hip, as I told you, where it can accommodate maximum synovial fluid. Right? This word I had mentioned even in tuberculosis of the hip also. So in any synovitis of the hip. Synovitis of the hip can be either inflammatory, non-inflammatory or infective. So the attitude of the limb in synovitis is Faber. Please remember that. X-ray shows a mild increase in joint space. So what is the possible correct answer? Sir, 
septic arthritis sir increase in hip septic arthritis okay septic arthritis because the child is toxic please remember the limb is in flexion abduction the child is toxic the if the limb is in flexion abduction external rotation the temperature is just mild long duration of symptoms and a uh, patient is able to move with pain that time it will be tubercular arthritis or synovitis okay but please remember transient synovitis the child is able to move but the child is limping in septic arthritis the pain is so severe the child cannot walk tubercular arthritis of course i don't want to go into the detail we'll go to the next question Seven year old boy is brought with a fever and pain in the hip Fair. again flexion abduction external rotation is the attitude of the hip mild reduction of the hip movements mild reduction of the movements in the hip movements there is a mild increase in the joint space so all the choices which are present in previous question are here so now you tell me there is a different clinical scenario again a child fever pain and mild restriction of the movements of the hip and mild increase in the joint space transient synovitis so you should yes but if you had given tubercular synovitis Sin tubercular synovitis the answer would be tubercular synovitis please remember this okay here he has already given arthritis arthritis the position will never be flexion abduction external rotation there the position will be flexion adduction internal rotation f a d i r here f a b e r so the answer is yes you are correct transient synovitis transient synovitis of the hip is characterized by all of the following except hmm option 4 sir very good internal rotation yes very good ha huh? one good clue you can clinch the answer see most of the times the children are certainly having one past episode of upper respiratory infection okay it is a aberration immunological aberration transient synovitis is a immunological aberration a reactive synovitis wherein the child would have had a uh, upper respiratory infection viral infection in the past so transient synovitis is a self limiting disorder just bed rest and analgesics will solve the problem it doesn't progress to arthritis please remember that and generally it resolves by 3 weeks it is seen commonly in children and it is unilateral generally only monoarticular monoarticular and most commonly it affects the hip all these things you please remember so it may follow upper respiratory infection here you remember esr and white blood cells are normal okay no signs of septic i mean uh, constitutional symptoms or systemic in, uh, inflammation no inflammatory markers are raised usg of course reveals the wide joint space because of accumulation of the synovial fluid okay one more important thing you should know Uh, i will come to this little later tom smith septic arthritis affects i have few photographs and radiographs of tom smith arthritis wherein you will never forget what is tom smith septic arthritis which which part of the body affects uh, which joint is affected in tom smith arthritis can anybody answer this sir hip yes it is hip joint of infants hip joint of infant see septic arthritis we were talking in a wide age range anywhere between uh, newborn to adolescence 
okay we were talking of septic arthritis but most commonly it is in the range of up to 6 to 7 years 8 years the most common painful uh, hip uh, entity is septic arthritis but when it comes to tom smith arthritis you please remember it is a infection in a infant less than one year there is a reason for that i will come to that later later so hip joint aseptic arthritis of infant is tom smith arthritis okay tom smith arthritis is infectious arthritis destroying it destroys as i told you septic arthritis it destroys the articular cartilage okay now we have you just apply that uh, your knowledge to answer this question so tom smith arthritis is an infectious arthritis of the hip so it destroys what femur neck acetabular roof greater trochanter capital epiphysis capital epiphysis you remember femoral capital epiphysis or epiphysis of the femoral head okay i did not explain but this is how the choice so tom smith arthritis is infectious arthritis destroys it destroys which part of the hip joint the third greater trochanter okay no it is a trap okay anybody else femur neck no again right okay i'll answer you for this because it is a tricky one once i explain the entity you will never forget it is a capital epiphysis you remember the head of the femur femoral capital epiphysis appears at the age of 1 year you remember femoral capital it is cartilaginous till then the primary uh, uh, ossification center of the head that is femoral head appears at the age of 1 year so before 1 year completion of 1 year that is infant infant is generally up to 1 year isn't it so till that time it is completely cartilaginous okay and it is intraarticular look at this acetabular already it is forming femoral neck is after it grows but the cap i'll i'll explain you with the picture but, but please remember tom smith arthritis it affects the capital epiphysis you remember this question i will explain you with the picture in subsequent slides okay tom smith arthritis is of course this is a no brainer now you should be able to answer this option 4 sir yes it's of hip in infants okay tom smith arthritis manifests this is a very interesting question tom smith arthritis manifests how does it manifest second hip stiffness right no you are wrong okay anybody else the answer is increased hip mobility and stability okay i will explain you why tom smith arthritis is not a acute condition it is a sequelae it is a sequelae of septic arthritis in infant so in infant if the uh, the hip joint is affected it is called as septic arthritis of the hip so what it does it destroys the femoral capital epiphysis the head of the femur is completely eaten away so what happens as the child grows there is absence of femoral head there is only neck and greater trochanter so it becomes a flail limb am i am i clear manjunath septic arthritis is a acute entity tom smith arthritis yes, sequelae of the septic arthritis in infancy okay okay i'll come to this little later yeah okay look at this there's one more picture look at this 
the this of course the child would be older than 5 years there is a head appearing here and there is head completely which has eaten away there is a neck which is there trochanter is there so the this length is provided because of capital epiphysis this growth this epiphysis is because of this this femoral capital physis which appears at one year if the infection of the hip joint is much before that when it was completely cartilaginous this you can understand if you read cdh also because you don't see a head in a less than one year old child you see only the neck you see only the trochanter so at that time if there was a infection which destroys the complete cartilage the child ends up with a picture like this that's why i told you that's why you should remember septic arthritis is an emergency is a dire emergency the late you you delay the treatment you are destroying the cartilage and this completely the growth is lost so the limb becomes short the limb becomes unstable the child ends up with permanent uh instability in the hip look at this so this is i was mentioning see as here in infancy it is all cartilaginous there will be bone here and this entire thing will be cartilaginous so the infection spreads up and the joint it gets destroyed look at this but in older child more than 1 year because there is a physis here the blood doesn't cross the physis remember this that's why the osteomyelitis of the proximal femur in older children doesn't become uh, septic arthritis easily of course if there is a erosion in this part it becomes a intracapsula okay look at this so the blood vessel uh, which was a hematogenous spread of the infection after the appearance of the capital epiphysis so this this sequelae the dastardly sequelae doesn't happen this very grotesque disformity doesn't happen if there is a septic arthritis of the hip in older children am i clear so it destroys the head completely and the limb becomes unstable so we'll go back this so tom smith arthritis is septic arthritis of the hip in infancy that is less than 1 year what does it do it destroys the cartilaginous femoral head because there is no ossification center still so it completely destroys the femoral head which is cartilaginous so when the child presents the child starts walking after one year isn't it so just before going to the school the child, parents bring the child saying that the child is limping the, the infection can be any time unless just one month after the uh, delivery where the child was presented with only high degree fever unable to move they give antibiotics the head is completely destroyed the parents notice only when the child starts walking when it becomes painless because the infection is resolved head is completely destroyed the limb becomes painless the hip is painless after the infection is resolved so limb is shorter x ray shows complete absence of head and neck see look at this this can be a mcq question what is the entity when a preschool child is brought to you wherein x ray shows absence of the femoral head the limb is shorter and the child walks with a painless limb okay the diagnosis would be either congenital dislocation of the hip or tom smith arthritis okay but they will say there is a history of fever in the past this is one more x ray tom smith arthritis please remember whenever somebody calls tom smith arthritis you should be able to recollect this picture right septic arthritis in a 2 year old child is often caused by i told you most common cause for the yes okay most common cause of bony ankylosis 
most common cause of bony ankylosis. Come on. Pyogenic arthritis. Very good. See, pyogenic arthritis. Pyogenic arthritis or septic arthritis causes bony ankylosis. What is ankylosis? Ankylosis is fusion of the joint. There is absolutely no movement of the joint because of a destruction. So ankylosis can be bony or fibrous. I will trust, tell certain differences, subtle differences or important difference between bony ankylosis and fibrous ankylosis. Bony ankylosis is painless. Absolutely no movement. Fibrous ankylosis is painful and there is some jog of movement. And cause of bony ankylosis is septic arthritis. Cause of fibrous ankylosis is tuberculosis. Okay, these three things you should remember. And of course, there is a difference. In tuberculosis spine, it causes bony ankylosis. Right? You remember that. But in all peripheral joints, the bony ankylosis is because of septic arthritis. Fibrous ankylosis is because of tubercular arthritis. Yeah, this one, uh, just to add to this uh, memory, picture memory is always better. That's why I add pictures in between. Okay, look at this. This is a pathophysiology. This, is in, this red color, what you see is a synovial inflammation. Yellow color is the pus in the joint. So this destroys the blue color. That is the cartilage. Okay, this destroys the cartilage. Right? What happens because of the subsequent complete destruction of the cartilage? The bones oppose each other. The eroded bones come opposite to each other like a fracture. Right? So fracture heals, isn't it, with the bone? So similarly, there's a bridging of the bone across the joint. It causes bony ankylosis. Am I clear, students? Okay? But this in tuberculosis, destruction is not complete. There is a patchy destruction. So that time what happens? There is a fibrous tissue bridging the joint. That causes fibrous ankylosis. But in septic arthritis, it causes, because of high virulence of the pyogenic organisms, it complete destruction of the cartilages cause bony ankylosis. Okay, look at this picture. This is a case of knee joint. Look at that. There is no joint space visible anywhere. Such a solid union like a fracture which has united. Look at this. There is a trabeculae across the bone uh, knee joint. This is a solid bony ankylosis. Right? Chondrolysis occurs commonly in. Okay. Hmm. Septic arthritis of infancy. You understood, isn't it? Chondro is what? Cartilage. It need not be the cartilage, the end of the bone, the, the hyaline cartilage. It can be fibro cartilage of the femoral head also. That's what the question means. Okay? In tubercular arthritis, any arthritis for that matter, the articular cartilage is destroyed. The articular cartilage, mark my words, articular cartilage. But the complete, the, uh, the femoral head is caused in because of septic arthritis of influency. Okay, I have some questions on uh, hand space infection. I will take 10 or 15 minutes more. Oh, started a little late. Okay, you have to bear with me. Index finger infection spreads too. Yeah. This is very important. Mid-palmar space. Mid-palmar space. Excellent. Okay. Very good, Manjunath. Okay. I will explain you what are the uh, spaces in subsequent slides. Okay. Philon is. What is Philon? Infection of pulp space. Very good. Infection of what is infection of nail fold? Candida. 
due to candidly no, no not candidly candidly aniko aniko my aniko anguish anguish something ango man okay right scratch your head for few more minutes i will come to that in subsequent slides okay the answer felon is as i told you you uh, okay you guessed it right the infection of the pulse space felon most common complication hmm osteomyelitis very good very good huh okay most common finger affected with felon 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 okay different people pronounce differently there is a difference in pronunciation between south and north indians again okay most common finger affected in felon ring finger index finger okay this is a memory based question you have to remember this is not application clinical application of course is more important nowadays true about felon all except yeah very interesting question option c sir very good very good huh very good septic artery okay look at this this is what is felon the pulp space is affected and longitudinal incision is taken to break the septi there is a sept i am not sure if i have diagram okay okay i will come to that look at this this is a classical picture of a felon web space infection happens here huh? i have some pictures i will show you that this is a classical clinical picture of felon and this is the longitudinal incision either you have to take incision here or you have to take a incision here why there is a osteomyelitis or the and this it ends up in gangrene also sometimes you know why because there is a digital vessel here going like this and the increased intra compartmental pressure causes the complete uh, blood supply loss to the tip of the finger that is one of the dreaded complication hence you have to immediately relieve this don't try to do any transverse incision a longitudinal incision either here or not. most commonly the transverse incision is done here you know why if you do a transverse in, i mean the longitudinal incision in the midline here if the scar becomes painful the tip is very very sensitive so generally we avoid putting a incision here best would be to put a incision longitudinal along the side okay here this this is what it is showing here look at this look at this okay you can see this side the incision just below the nail fold on the volar aspect right Oh Excuse me, sir. Yeah, tell me. The felon occurs only on the ring finger, or the most common site is the ring finger. Most common, most common. Any pulp space infection, any pulp space infection is felon. Remember that. Okay. What is this? A spotter. paranoia paranoia very good very good so what is the treatment of this surgically you would have read in your surgery textbook so either a partial nail excision this part of the nail is excised paranoia is different felon is different this is very important hand infections are very very important because it can leave a very uh very bad sequelae okay paranoia i'll not go into the treatment but just for the completion i wanted to show you this so what they do is they excise the partially this nail plate this is the nail bed
very well. Even if you remove the entire nail, they, it can always grow. Okay. Am I am I audible? My internet is poor, I guess. Am I audible? Uh, audible, sir. Audible. Okay, good. So some uh, schematic diagrams you should see. I have only two, three more questions to go. Please uh, have some patience. See, these are flexor tendon sheath covering both FDS and FDP. Please remember this. This covers both FDS, that is flexor digitorum synovium, I mean superficialis and profundus. Okay. These are discrete cover. These are discrete entity. But unlike the flexor tendon sheath we of the thumb, it goes up to uh, the wrist and distal forearm. Similarly, the flexor tendon sheath goes of the little finger goes up to wrist below the carpal tunnel up to the distal forearm. That this communication, you know, is called as space of parona, right? And one more important thing is this: what uh, Manjunath, I, I appreciate has answered that question. These are deep palmar spaces. You should know this is a mid palmar space, thinner space, thinner space. Okay, sorry. Thinar space is different from thinar muscles. It is deeper to this. So the 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 tendon tenosynovitis of the index finger can extend till here. That is a thinar space. You can see this thinar space. Thinar muscles are here. Thinar muscles, thinar eminence is here. Thinar is with respect to thumb. Thinar space is here. Okay. Other tenosynovitis can spread up to mid palmar space. Why this? You you please remember. I will come to that very important question a little later. So tenosynovitis of the thumb can cause a horseshoe abscess. Horseshoe abscess is because there is a communication beyond the carpal tunnel in the distal forearm. Okay, that's why I uh, showed that picture. Similarly mid palmar space here covering uh, uh, contents are vessels deep palmar space these are called as flexor tendons look at this this part is thinar space this is mid palmar space infection of ulnar bursa is diagnosed by very interesting question Infection of ulnar bursa is diagnosed by. Very confusing uh, choices, isn't it? Okay, I will I'll answer for this. Can I will sign? Okay, if I just answer this question, you will never remember. I have some pictures to uh, reinforce that. One more thing. Can I will sign? is positive in. Can anybody answer this? Option one, tenosynovitis. Tenosynovitis, okay. Look at this. This is important, okay. See, look at the, the fingers carefully. This finger is completely swollen and flexed in the attitude or the position. See, if there is a tendon sheath, flexor tenosynovitis of this finger, the infection has enough space to spread from here to here. Okay? So, sausage-shaped finger or fusiform swelling of the finger, flexed posture, painful on extension. Uh, okay, I have... Okay. Okay. Can anybody read this? I will show you. See, entire finger is swollen, finger is flexed. If you do a passive extension, it is painful. Okay? So, tenderness or entire finger tenderness, flexion posture, passive extension is painful. Okay? Symmetrical enlargement, complete finger is, these are the Canaval's cardinal signs. Canaval's cardinal signs. 
Okay, so that's why I was telling if there is a tenosynovitis of the little finger, it can spread till here and form a horseshoe abscess because it communicates with the tenosynovitis of the flexor pollicis longus here. Okay, there is a direct communication of tenosynovitis of little finger and the thumb. But whereas index, middle and ring finger, they end only up till here. They end only up till here. If these, there is an extensive infection, they can spread it. This can spread to thinner space and these can spread to mid palmar space. Am I clear, friends? Okay. With that, I will come to the end of my class today. I hope it was useful. Uh, I would always appreciate to take some feedback or so that we can consider that in my future classes. Any questions anybody has? No, sir. Thank you, sir. Suchet, I, I would appreciate if Neha and Suchet talk because I am now familiar with Shirisha and Manjunath. Neha, Suchet, have, are you attending for the first Yes, yes sir. sir. It's the first time. Okay, good. So no, sir. You... It's my... Suchet. No, no, sir. It's not my first class. I have attended many classes over here. All right. That's good. That's good. That's good. Okay. So, shall I stop sharing the screen? Thank you, everybody. Thank Have you, sir. Right. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.